Most people spend their entire lives trying to avoid friction. I found it in myself a, a desire, a calling to embrace friction, uh, tension, transitions, changes, uh, and to work with them. Life is friction. To some, that might uh, be kind of a daunting, uh, a, a daunting realization. Mothers, you've uh, if you've gone through a childbirth, uh, that would be why you're a mother. Uh, of course, the more enjoyable friction came nine months before. But then it continues through your life, uh, all the way into our passing. That's, that's always there. For some people, that's kind of a daunting realization that gravity is going to win. Uh, gravity doesn't cut anybody any slack. Um, or you can just choose to work with gravity, kind of work towards those changes, kind of work and embrace uh, that idea of the friction and work toward a solution. A life-affirming resolution. Um, for me, that's, that's kind of what you know, life is. Life is working towards those resolutions. Um, it's working with the tension and the friction because that's where art is. That's where the art, that's where the art occurs. And the purest art, the best forms of art, are those ones that actually capture that moment, that edge. A um, good example of that friction and tension, cello. You take wood, you bend it into impossible shapes, curves, angles, a place that doesn't want to be, not breaking, just on the edge. And then you take that bow and you place it across those strings. There it is, the release, the art. Sonic joy, sonic sadness, sonic anger, all within that, all within that release. What's really uh, appealing to me is that people who actually can capture those moments, capture those, those, uh, those frictions, those changes, uh, that's very inspiring to me. And that's why I do what I do, uh, to witness those things uh, in whatever form. It can be on the canvas, it can be through a lens, it can be through cuisine, uh, it can be through music. And in the case of what I've chosen, to, the path that I've chosen to go down, uh, winemaking uh, and growing of grapes. Uh, World-class wine is grown on those edges uh, where things are very challenging. They are time capsules, not just capturing time, but capturing a place uh, in that bottle. And as soon as you open that cork, you better be present for it because it's going to change, because life has changed. Nothing sits still. So pay attention to what's in that bottle. On that edge, the best wines in the world, hail, frost, late spring frost, winter kill, uh, humidity, hippies, um, it happens. Um, you know, uh, wine from, uh, you know, very cozy regions, growing regions, it kind of, it kind of bores me. Um, but the, the stuff that we're growing in Arizona, we're on that edge. We get those late spring frosts, we get winter kill, we get hail, we get monsoons, we get haboobs, we get dust devils. We have all those things uh, that are going against us uh, to almost try to prevent us from bringing you that final product. That's why, we're, that's why we're up here talking about it. We need you. We've done the hard work. We've done the heavy lifting. We make it through the late spring frost. We make it through the monsoons. We make it through the hail, barely, on the edge. So we've done the heavy lifting. We've found out that, that this is that region for those things. It, this is a thing that you can't take away. You can't move this to China. This is a local event. And we're dug in. We've been doing it for decades. What we need from you is to do the easy part. Drink it. <laughs> Tell people about it. We need you. It's changed the entire economic landscape of Arizona. We are now here, we are players in the state. Uh, the capital has noticed that we're here to stay. So, thank you very much.